So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today, a day in the life of a successful voiceover artist uh, with Katie Harrington. Katie, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thank you, happy to be here. And you know what, it's, it's so fantastic to, to have somebody here um, that has had success, which is why we like doing these, you know, the webinars for people, you know, getting started. And obviously there's, you know, there's, there can be some trepidation as far as, well, you know, when I'm new to this, you know, what can I expect? Um, you know, let's, let's just kind of start off by, by saying you've been with us for less than three months now. How long did it take you to start having some success on the site? So I uh, was awarded my first job uh, just under a week after joining. Wow. And now as far as, you know, I, I think a lot of people probably think, well, okay, how long have you been doing this? I mean, what kind of, what, what kind of experience did you have coming into, uh, coming into voices.com as far as the voiceover industry? Virtually none. I did a little bit of voice work in terms of uh, children's videos. I was playing Minecraft videos. And so I was the voice and uh, uh, animation uh, for a little, a little show called Space Home Adventure. Um, but that was our own kind of doing uh, and uh, creating. So other than that, though, never been hired to, uh, to do a voiceover necessarily. Now, did you, did you have a background in, 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 in broadcasting at all? Right. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, no broadcasting, journalism, um, TV personality, anything like that. Um, that's completely new. So, okay. And so acting, any acting background? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, my background, uh, educational, uh, was criminology, psychology, and public relations. I uh, did a lot of uh, work. I uh, taught English overseas in, in Taiwan for numerous years, um, but no formal training uh, at all for, for acting. So, and the one thing that I do want to mention too, obviously, uh, because we just started out, um, we want to make this as interactive as possible. That's why we have the Q&A panel. So yeah. you know, if you have any questions for Katie whatsoever, um, you know, bring them up and, and I'll try to ask as many as I can. And, you know, if, if there might be duplicates, then I might try to kind of filter some of them out. Um, and, you know, we, we can't be in here more than an hour. So, I mean, if we don't get to all of them, then, you know, I'll do my best to, to get through them all. But, but yeah, we'd love to hear your questions. Um, so I guess what, what got you started in the, the idea that maybe, you know, voiceover was something you wanted to do? Right. Yeah. Well, as I had mentioned, um, uh, I, I did hear uh, quite a bit, um, over the years that, you know, you have a, a nice voice, um, you should do commercials, things like that. And I didn't really pay much attention to that. Um, but then I heard through um, a friend of mine uh, that knew about voices and they had worked a little bit in some, uh, some casting about voices.com. Uh, so they said, well, just check it out. So I did. And it was really easy to kind of start up um, uh, the profile and look for jobs. And, and so I did, and I didn't think too much of it. I honestly, yeah, had no idea what I was doing, just kind of threw myself out there. And uh, I, I thought within a week or I thought um, after a few days, I was like, oh, I'm getting rejected. You know, no one likes me kind of a thing. Um, and then within the week I got the job and then I found out that's actually quite good. Uh, so for me, it was just kind of um, something I never really thought about. Um, did think it was interesting, uh, like to do uh, voices and stuff like that, but nothing, you know, professional. Um, so it was really just because it was word of mouth of this uh, opportunity to be able to record from home. Um, I had some equipment already to, uh, to use uh, that was professional uh, grade. Um, so I, uh, yeah, just kind of did it on, on a whim. So now, because you'd mentioned, you know, the fact that you got hired in your first week, that mm -hmm. is absolutely, you know, rare. Um, really? As, See, as, I was, I, I totally, by the fifth day, I was like, no, I'm not, you know, so that's great. But, the, the, yeah. you know, the, and that's just it. Like the, the one thing that I try to prepare everybody for this is, is rejection. That's what the performance mm -hmm. industry is. I mean, the majority of what you audition for is never going to come back. Definitely. Um, so yeah. we always encourage people to say, listen, if you want to do this, we can provide you all the opportunity, but you need to be prepared to, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. That means do a lot of auditions, knowing that most of them aren't going to turn into anything. It's just yes. it's the nature of the beast. So the fact that you had as, you know, as early success as, as you've had, that's amazing. Um, 
you, you haven't even quite been with us three months. No. Um, do you know offhand how many jobs you've had so far? Uh, nine. Nine. So, okay. So you're getting about three a month, which yeah. those are pretty decent numbers for somebody that's, that's auditioning a lot. Um, I've noticed you've done a fair amount of auditions as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know roughly how many you, you're up to? You know what? I don't actually. Um, I would say I typically do audition throughout the week, not usually weekends, right. um, but I'd say I'd probably would, let's say on average, do like five a day. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, you know what? I mean, that's, that's what you want to do. You want to be doing multiple auditions a day. You know, we usually recommend even doing like 10, 15, as many as 20. For sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause you want to give yourself a legitimate chance for success. Um, we got a lot of questions coming in, which is fantastic. So I'll start getting to them so we don't miss any. Uh, sure. First question actually from John saying, just seeing some guitars on the wall behind Katie. Oh. Uh, does she have a music background? And if so, any vocal training? Right. I, I, I don't. Those guitars do not belong to me. They're my husband. Um, he does have all the vocal training, which is why I was already set up with the professional equipment to record from. So I've had absolutely zero vocal training. So what do you put on your profile then since you don't have any background in, in voice over acting or, right. or, or regular so, acting? Yeah. So I did put that, I, I did do that uh, child's uh, animation uh, videos. So I did put that as my experience, but really that's it. I've kind of let my audition speak for myself. I've slowly started um, doing more demos to have something to showcase. Um, but really it was just really, a uh, uh, per audition based um, uh, thing. So I would read a script and what I thought I would be great for um, what they were looking for and, and purely base it on that. Now you, now you touched on a really good point that, you know, you let your audition speak for themselves. And that's, mm. you know, that's the point we try to drive home that the, the, the profile is, is, is great um, as a tool. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of aspects about the profile that help. Um, but there's certain things that really, I mean, it'd be nice to have, you know, added, you know, things to it for people to see, but the, mm -hmm. the, the profile doesn't really get a lot as much traffic as people think it's more an algorithm driven, you know, service that, you know, it, what you put on the profile helps us to determine what jobs to send your way to audition for. Mm -hmm. And there's key things that you put in there, like your, your, you know, your, your special skills, your languages, your accents, things like that. So if you don't yes. have you know, the, the credentials to say, well, I've done this many years in acting or, or broadcasting or, or voiceover. It's not something that's even going to be picked up by the algorithm. So it's, it's nice to have if somebody browses through your profile, but sure. yeah, it's, it's, it's not really necessary. It's those auditions. You want to get those auditions out there, get your voice heard by as many sets of ears as you can. Right. That's correct. And I mean, I have received a few uh, private auditions, three or four, and I can only assume it's based on what I've put in my profile. So I probably wouldn't have received those if I didn't at least uh, do something with that profile to have. Uh, an interesting question from, uh, from Rachel, because we talked about the rejection. Um, how do you deal with the rejection? Right. It kind of goes up and down. Um, I kind of like to think that they're looking for a certain voice. And if it's if I'm not it, it's nothing personal. There's nothing I could have done to, to make it better. Um, and I do try to audition for things that I feel are right for my voice. I'm not, I don't feel that I'm necessarily a super commercial sounding voice. Maybe um, I see some auditions that are looking for like a mother type or something. And I'm like, that's probably not me. So I find you get less rejections if, if you, um, kind of cater to uh, auditions that are, are looking for your kind of voice, which comes just from doing more auditions, which, which helps. Even if you don't get them, um, you can really um, uh, take home lessons from that once, you've, once you put yourself out there. Right. And to your credit, you haven't had a lot of rejection. I was, I was looking at some of the numbers before we started, and I think you've submitted 200 auditions, which oh, right on. Is, is, a, is a fair amount, but over in, yeah. th in a three-month period, it's kind of low, especially for somebody that's earned as many jobs as you have. So like, way to go. I mean, it's, Thank you. you know, most of the, like most of the talent on the site that are earning consistent jobs probably do about a hundred auditions a week. Wow. Um, exactly. And I do say I need to step up my game, but I, I did notice, I mean, I was auditioning more often when I first started, like a job would come in and be like, pounce on it. Um, but then I've, I've kind of backed off a little bit because I, as I mentioned, um, I, I do feel that 
I'll, I'll read a thing, I'll read a script and I'm like, I don't think this is for me. And, you know, you do kind of pull more toward a job. Maybe that's like a higher paying job or something that's going to have a quick turnover. And so you should submit anyway. But if it's not, you know, I, I, yeah, you, you, you shouldn't probably put yourself out there for, for that rejection because you know it's not yourself or you couldn't um, replicate it if you actually got hired to do it. Well, whatever it is that you're doing, you're obviously doing it right. And if that's like, you know, getting a feel for the, for the, for the project, the script mm -hmm. or, or what have you, I mean, and some people just have that, that, that gift, that knack. So that's, that's amazing. Um, kind of a, a further to that. And this is based on a question that's come in. How do you separate yourself from the thousands of voices at voices.com? Like, how do you stick out? Well, I think maybe to further that is, Maybe because I think a lot of people are misunderstanding how many voice talents there are on the site versus how many are going for the jobs that they're going for. When you audition for a job, do you ever take a look to see how many people have auditioned for it? Oh, absolutely. When I first started out, so I would go to the computer and I would look for the auditions or they would get emailed to me. And uh, by the time I went and actually um, did my um, audition and went back to it, I would hit refresh and it went from like four responses to like 32. And I'm like, oh my gosh, get it in, you know? <laughs> um, but I feel like they're looking for something and when they hear it, um, they're going to hire you no matter how many they've heard before. Um, my first job that I, that I received, um, I was only 60% voice match. And I, I think I auditioned there. I'd already had maybe 45 people and I thought it, they wouldn't even, you know, listen to it. Um, but they did and they hired me. So they were clearly looking for something. And when they finally heard it, they did. Um, so I think it's, it's not necessarily something that you can um, work toward. It's just what they're looking for. If you have it, then, then you do. And, and again, it goes back to that whole rejection and not taking something personally, because unless you've completely flubbed up uh, the script or, or said their name wrong or something, then it's really the voice that they're that they're looking for and you've, you've hit it or you didn't. And when, so when you've seen how many people are auditioning for these jobs, mm -hmm. have you ever seen numbers in the thousands? I have not yet. I know. And I don't think you will. <laughs> Typically what uh, we normally see, <clears throat> obviously depending on the, on the language requirements, uh, English obviously being the most popular um, language for, for voiceover work and jobs that are being posted. Um, typically I think you would see anywhere from about 20 to maybe 80 or 90. Uh, yeah, so I think the most I've, I've seen was probably just over a hundred. Yeah. And it was probably a high bang job. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, this is, this is fantastic. I mean, the questions keep coming in. Um, Calvin is asking, Katie, you started off without any formal training, began this career relatively fresh. My question is, were there any books that you read uh, on your own, on your own time rather to help you feel more confident? No, absolutely not. Um, Lately, I am starting to to read or necessarily read more, not books, um, sorry, but um, podcasts. I have looked at a few um, Voices.com podcasts a bit in the past of, of other panelists, um, and I've also just kind of scrolled online. Um, one thing I've noticed, I, I'm Canadian, and so sometimes um, I get some job offers, um, but they're looking for me to kind of neutralize that Canadian accent. They want like an American accent. And I'm like, well, other than like a boat and about, I don't really know how to do that. So I'm starting to try to learn a little bit uh, of that. But no, uh, I, I, haven't, I have not uh, uh, read any books or, or done anything like that. Um, another question from, uh, from Rachel again, what made you go with voices.com over the alternative sites? Really, because I was told about Voices.com, someone I, I know had um, had joined, um, they kind of use it infrequently. They, they found it through another um, casting call that they did, um, but um, I, I just heard about it and I thought, why not? I, I liked um, that you could, you know, pick and choose which auditions that you wanted to do and, and really kind of market yourself, although they're giving you a platform to do it. Um, so I hadn't looked into other, um, um, marketing websites before voices.com, honestly. Um, that was the first one I, I looked at because I was told about it. And, and one thing to add to that too, and it, it's a question that comes up obviously a lot is, you know, what separates you from, from the other guys? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it comes down to what you want. I mean, the last thing we would try to do is, is bring somebody in that, that this isn't the right fit for them. 
um, you know, whether it be the, the membership fee or whether it be, you know, how, the, how many people they're up against for a given job. Um, but at the end of the day, I think as long as somebody is, is recognizing that this is, a, this is their business, you need to, if you're serious about it, you need to invest in it. And that means getting the, getting the proper equipment. That means, mm -hmm. you know, paying for the tools, you know, voices.com being one of your tools to provide you with those opportunities. Um, you know, we, we provide you with the resources, whether it be putting you in touch with coaches if need be, you know, or, 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 or what have you tips and, and best practices, um, you know, higher paying jobs. But again, it's, it's got to be right for you. Um, the last thing you want to do is get into something that, you know, you think, oh, well, I, I was really excited about doing voiceover, but now, you know, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. Um, Keith is asking, uh, Katie, any tips for demo readings? What did you use? Right. So I had no idea what to do. And um, so I, I looked into it and a lot of Google searching, really. Um, and I think you can ask... Um, jobs they've completed um, to use as a demo if you if you like. I haven't done that yet. So what I've done uh, is I've Googled sample scripts online um, and um, and just use those. Um, so I've, I've used the script and then put uh, music as a background and uploaded. I think I have five demos. I need to do more actually um, for each category um, on voices so that if they are searching for someone in radio, then you'll pop up and so on. But yeah, just online search. Um, there's some websites that you can find, uh, including voices.com that will give you some sample scripts to use and uh, just, uh, up, uh, record those as, as genuine as you can and yep. put those up. Absolutely. And we, we do offer royalty free sample scripts so that you don't need to worry about, you know, what's, what's, you know, what you can and can't post. Um, if you have any questions, please email me and I can send you a link to it. Um, it's a, I, I knew it was going to take a, a little bit, but it, it did come up. Um, <laughs> after, uh, after three months now of doing voices.com, mm -hmm. are you earning enough for a wage? For a wage? So almost, I can say, um, not, I guess, depends on what your wage you're looking for. Honestly, I guess if I was working minimum wage, I mean, minimum wage, probably. Um, but, uh, I'd say probably it's about a thousand dollars a month. So yeah. to double it would be a wage for sure. And yeah. I think if you ask anybody, if they, you know, to say, listen, I mean, how would you like to do this? And make an extra thousand bucks a month. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. it, it's it's not something that is going to turn into a six figure salary overnight. It is a slow climb, but you know, it's definitely a career with a lot of potential. And the fact again that you you know you're making as much as you are now in such a short time that's amazing. Because you haven't even been with us long enough to get repeat business. I wouldn't think. Do you have any repeat customers so far? I haven't yet. No. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. And in terms of the wage too, you have to look at it, in which I did. Um, how much time are you spending uh, auditioning and also for the work itself into what you're getting paid? So I spend, you know, approximately five hours a week. So to make a thousand dollars a month uh, for 20 hours of work, I mean, it's, yeah, it says itself. Absolutely. A uh, question from Josh. And uh, I know I can think, I think I know why he's asking this. Josh actually just uh, signed up today and I think he's being inundated with, uh, with job invites to audition. Right. Uh, he said, uh, with the number of auditions coming in, how did you choose which ones to audition for? So the very first thing that happened when I signed up for Voices.com is I probably got about 220 emails of jobs. So I went in to Voices.com and I went into account settings and um, isolated to jobs that pay anything from $300 above to send me an email. So that lowered that down significantly. Uh, so what I do is I, the emails will come in and then when a, a certain time of day works for me to, to audition, I'll look at each job that has come in and then I'll print off the jobs I want to do. And I'll look into the other jobs that are, you know, between the hundred and two fifty dollar jobs as well that I'm interested in. And then, um, oh, excuse me. And then, um, apply to those ones. So I did a filter because it's just way overwhelming yeah. if you just let any and all job get emailed to you. So yeah, for the price point through email and then look at the order that it came in and then also look at uh, the order in which they're wanting the, um, uh, the job uh, completed. So, or, or sort of the deadline. So if they 
ask for a job today and they want it by tonight, obviously that comes first than job that they're looking for by the 24th. Now, how many jobs typically are you seeing in an, in an average day that have been, have been matched to you and sent to you to audition for? It does vary. Um, I'd say maybe, um, so sent to me with a price point, probably like maybe six or seven. Okay. And when you, now when you mentioned price point. So yeah, so $300 and above, I get emailed directly to me and then I'll go and look at other jobs that are, um, in my match as well. And of course that brings it up, you know, to 10 or more kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was the first job that you got hired for through us? Right. So as I mentioned, it was um, for Capital One and um, I was only 60% voice match for that. And it was um, internal video uh, that they were looking for, for recruitments. Okay. Here's a question that uh, it's, it's, I think we can both answer, but I'm, I'm going to give you your first shot at it because I, I, I think I know what your answer is. Um, when you applied for your first job and you got it, did you already own professional voiceover equipment or did you record your voice, say, on your smartphone or computer? Right. Yeah. Um, no. So I did have um, some equipment. Uh, so we have the microphone and the recording um, equipment and I do have uh, editing software as well. What, uh, what are you using for software? So you do the uh, Sony Vegas for the editing. Uh, and I have the Sony uh, Sonar producer for the um, the recorder, and the, and the microphone is the Rode NTIA. Okay, and yeah, to, so basically to further that point, you want to make sure that you've got the the equipment before you start auditioning, because if you if you're auditioning on a smartphone or on you know if it doesn't sound good in the audition, a client is just going to assume it's not going to sound good when you mm -hmm. get hired. So Definitely. those auditions have to be broadcast quality. Um, yes, for sure. Deliver what you're going to be able to give them um, for the finalized copy. And, and yeah, you don't want to do it on phone, having static. You have to be wary of that. I, we've soundproofed the room a bit. It's not completely soundproof for sure. We do have a little bit of things on the walls, but I do have to be wary of time of day, things like that, traffic going by, other things uh, as well, because you don't want to hear that. Um, yep. If they assume your audition sounds like that, then they're going to assume that your, your completed project will sound the same. How long do you typically, how long is an audition for you typically? Um, I would say about five minutes. Okay. So the audio though that you send in for the audition, how, how oh, long? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's say uh, typically about what? Um, 10, 15 seconds. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the, and the reason I ask is you'd mentioned, you know, traffic driving by and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what I always say to people is, you know, you don't need a soundproof booth. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if, you know, if a, if a car goes by a doorbell rings, a dog barks, whatever, redo the audition, it's 15 seconds. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then make sure you get 15 seconds of clean audio. It comes down to, you know, when, when the, you're doing the, if you would get hired, you know, and if it's like, it's an audio book, you know, that could get a little hairy if, if you don't have quiet around you, but for the auditions themselves, yeah, just make sure that, you know, if, if you have, if you have to redo it, you have to redo it. Um, but you want to make sure the acoustics are good. You don't have room noise. You don't have any echo. Um, so now would you know offhand basically what your initial investment was as far as, you know, setting up the home studio? I'm afraid I don't. Um, I didn't do that. Um, but I do know typically good microphones, things like that. I mean, they'll run you a few hundred dollars, I'd say. Um, okay. But I, I don't know of my, my specific one. I was fortunate enough that right. uh, someone had set it up already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's, there's so many different ways to do it. I mean, you've got a, a obviously a nice setup there. Um, there are ways to do it for a lot less money um, mm -hmm. that aren't nearly as fancy, but they are effective. Um, you know, obviously the, the big investment as far as money goes, you know, the technical side is, is the microphone. You know, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't need to spend $1,300 on a Neumann, although it'd be nice if you did. Um, you can get away with, you know, spending 150, 200 bucks on a, on a Blue Yeti, for instance. Um, what, now, what, sorry, what kind of mic did you say you use? Uh, so the microphone is a Rode uh, NTIA. Okay. Okay. You remember offhand what, what that went for? I don't. Okay. No. Like I was uh, saying, it's probably a couple hundred dollars, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a, a portable one as well. And I think that was around the same price point. So I would say, yeah, to be safe, it'd be, be about that amount. Right. Yeah. And as far as acoustics go, I mean, there's, there's ways of doing it, again, without spending a ton of money. 
whether, you know, some people set up in a closed closet surrounded by clothing, you know, it helps to dampen the sound so you yes. don't have that echo. Yeah. Um, you know, if I've got a couple of suggestions, if anyone's ever curious, you can email me dave.kirby at voices.com. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure obviously that those, those auditions sound as good as what the, the final product is going to sound like. Yes. Um, now, here's a, an interesting question. What, uh, what are all of your resources for audition calls? I don't know if that means, I apologize if I'm getting it wrong, but maybe, you know, is it just through voices.com or do you have other avenues or? Right, it is right now. And, and I, I have thought about it. And I think if you wanted to, you know, do this full time, you would want to look into other avenues um, online, but also maybe within your area as well. Um, we do have like a small uh like professional recording studio here and and it's the place that I live in um and uh so I do knew I I do know that they do um voiceovers for for work through that um so I, I have been thinking about that in terms of branching out but for me right now it's just solely been through voices.com nice um so you you know you're you've been successful on the site um you're doing a few auditions a day how much time would you say you're actually you know out of your day is, is devoted to doing voiceover, whether it be auditions or jobs that you're hired for? Yeah. So I kind of looked into that to see about, you know, the term, the, the money that's coming in and the amount of time that I'm spending. So I was saying probably about, um, you know, an hour a day would probably be quite generous because it depends on if I had received a job or not that week. But um, so to be, you know, fair ish, it would be, let's say five hours a week. Um, so an hour a day through Monday through Friday, typically I don't do it on the weekends unless something has come in. So five hours a week is, is pretty fair. I think. Now, do you, do you do any, any, uh, marketing of yourself at this point? At this point, I don't No, Everything is just through voices.com. I haven't branched out yet. I have been thinking about that, but, um, no, purely through voices. Yeah. Now, what would you say as far as long-term goals? I mean, obviously, you know, you're 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 hitting the mark a lot earlier than 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 most, doing a thousand bucks a month. Um, like, how would you see yourself, say, a year from now, or or five years from now, or what what are your plans? Right. Yeah. So I've I've really just been figuring out kind of as I go. I mean, each uh, audition is an opportunity for me to learn, really, um, and, and genuinely. And so I feel the more that I do. Um, the more that I'm interested in, um, yeah, looking into other sites to uh, promote myself and also to, yeah, to reaching out to all the companies that are, that are local that would be interested in hiring a voiceover actor, perhaps getting professional uh, demos done and, and having that, maybe even having a website. So if people are looking for me, uh, then they can find me through other avenues as well. Okay. So take it back a little bit. You know, you, you start off your day, um, you, you, you log in to see, you know, what, what's in there as far as, you know, material for you to audition for. Can you walk us through the process of, of basically how you, you go from, you know, deciding what you're going to audition for to, you know, how it all works and, and submitting it? Yeah. So, uh, typically I will usually end up going into auditioning, uh, later on in the day, unless something kind of sparks, uh, right away. If I get a private audition or something, I'll go to that. But, um, I, I kind of let the uh, the emails come through to uh, the the jobs that are, are are hiring, and then I go sit down to do it. So I go onto Voices.com and I and I go through the emails and I look through um, each of the scripts. Um, I look at word counts. Uh, I look at what their company is, uh, what they're asking for, and whether or not it seems like it's a good fit for me. Um, so based on that, I eliminate ones that I don't think um, I should do and uh, start going through ones that, uh, that I'm interested in, ones that I think that would be a good fit. Um, and for me, I just do it um, individually. So I um, load, load them up on my computer and then I come over and do uh, each take for each one. So I'll come over, uh, do the audition, go right back to the page, uh, send in my proposal and my audition and then send it off. And then I go through the next one. Once all those ones are done, then I'll go have a look through of um, uh, other jobs that are between like the hundred and two hundred fifty dollar ones that I didn't get an email for, and have a look through those and see which ones that are a good match for me, based obviously on the voice match, but also on what they're what they're looking for. Now, when you're when you're doing the edits, um, what mm -hmm. how much editing are you doing on on an audition? 
On auditions, pretty minimal. Um, so I'll go through, um, uh, immediately I'll, I'll take the, the script and I'll record myself like the very first take. So after I've looked at um, the script, so depending on the company uh, and the, uh, the wording. So if I have any issues like how to pronounce the company or words that they've done, so I'll go and Google that and make sure that I've got that right if they've provided um, any kind of uh, direction. So like for pacing or, or, or word emphasis, things like that, um, I'll, I'll highlight that. Um, and uh, uh, um, yeah, and then kind of just take it as a, as a case by case basis there. Now, how do you find the, uh, the, the bidding process? Because and I, I think just for anybody that doesn't know, which probably mm -hmm. be most people, is when you submit an audition, you have to submit a bid for how much you want to be paid. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people look at that and they think, I would have no clue what to ask. How do you, yeah. how do you work with that? Yeah. So I did do a search on that. Um, and so I did have, uh, so on voices.com, there is a rate card. There, there's also another one that I found as well for non-union um, voiceover actors and kind of the baseline for um, the, the type of job and what, uh, what's the average for, um, for pay rate of that. And I look at that. Then I also look at what they're offering. So typically it's, um, they do have like a, a window. So it's like, 100 to 250 dollars or it's 250 to 500 or so on if it's one of those um i typically do do like the middle of the line to like a little bit more if it is just a flat out number i'll bid that flat out number and if it's they're bidding way low for what they're asking if they're bidding a hundred dollars for thirty thousand words of an audiobook and they want you know two thousand files and so on then i'll just be like no so, um, it, yeah, for, for me, I had to research what's the mo what, what's, uh, other people are asking or what's the going rate. Uh, also, where I stand from, from a, a new voiceover actor and also, also what their budget is. And, it's, and that's one of the things that we like to let people know of is you're absolutely free to bid whatever you think is, is what, you know, if, if you look at the budget that's included and you think, you know what, that's not worth it, you know, mm -hmm. you, there, your options, you can either just say, okay, I'll you know, pass it over. But more mm -hmm. importantly, if it's something that you want to do, then then do the audition and and ask for the bid that you think is fair. Um, I've seen it where you know a client will say, "Yeah, okay, you know what? That was that was more than we you know we could afford, but we found the extra money because we really like you." Right. They may reach out to you and say, "Listen, we really like you, but would you settle for this amount?" And at that point, it's up to you. It's your call. Um, you've got to do what you've got to do. What's right for you and and what you think is fair. Um, and you know you want. Obviously, we want to make sure that industry standards are maintained as far as as far as mm -hmm. pricing and, and, and things like that go. Yeah. Um, now, as far as again, we, we got a lot of questions about technical stuff, so uh, I'm trying to eliminate the ones that we've already that we've already sure. tackled. Um, aside from already having access to pro equipment, did you have any issues trying to adjust your background noises, like hums, echoes, things like that? Uh, hums, echoes. I guess. Um what I'll do is just really kind of edit those out. So I will do, let's say I do a take and unfortunately uh, a sound comes through. Then if I can't edit it out, then I'll just do it again until it's quiet. Um, for my own voice, if I do something and I take a, a breath or, or something like that, I'll just cut that right out um, to, to have it more streamlined, which of course I'll do in the, the fi final product as well. Um, yeah, so if I'm, I'm talking um, or if I start to uh, say the line and I um, uh, mess up, then I'll just cut that out, kind of keep going and, and so on. Now, as far as, again, with equipment, um, have you got any additional equipment like a, a foam patch, Source Connect, ISDN, anything like that? I don't right now. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I have been looking into that. Um, there's also some resources that I can go and use outside as well. Um, uh, so I will do that if there was a job that needed that specific, but, uh, I've had, I think at least half of my jobs that I've received have been live directed sessions. And so we've just called in to a conference number and I have my headphones on plugged into my phone and they give me feedback. And so I can't hear them, but I record into my uh, software um, uh, as they, as they give me direction and that's worked just, just fine because I'm recording it for them. So it doesn't, doesn't matter, uh, um, the quality for my voice to their phone. Um, it's just the receiving end. So the, the phone has worked, uh, for me so far.
Now, do you do you find that they that when when they want that live direction, do they normally mention that in the job posting? They do. I've had uh, two that didn't, um, and then they just kind of assume they're like, are you free for a directed session um, later? And I'm like, okay. Um, and I know that some people are kind of weary about that. Um, I mean, it is a little bit intimidating, uh, kind of nervous that my very first job was a live directed read um, to uh, Seattle with three people and I didn't know what I was doing. And, but they're very, you know, encouraging and you know, within the half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever you're doing, you hash it all out and you send it to them and you're done versus doing a take, sending it to them. They're coming back and back and forth. So I, I highly recommend, you know, taking those live directed, directed sessions. I mean, I, I have noticed there isn't always, as always um, as many people applying for those because it, you know, maybe they just can't do that on the fly or it's a little bit nerve wracking. But for me, I find it's great because you can get the feedback right away and you can do that take and get and nail it for them, uh, what they're looking for. Now, have you ever had, when you haven't had the live session, where they have asked you for a revision, for instance, maybe whether it be something, you know, maybe that they wanted you to do differently, or maybe they had an adjustment in the script or anything like that? I have. Um, typically, it's been um, an adjustment in the script. And, uh, and, and I've, I've done them. How, and how do you normally handle that as far as, um, do you normally ask for more compensation or, or, or how have you handled it to this point? Right. I, I don't right now. Um, I kind of, t yeah, I mean, for, from my experience, I haven't had too much back and forth. So if they had asked for just another take for my voice, I just kind of looked at it as the equivalent so that they didn't want that, but they've added another word or they wanted to add this. I didn't really find it to be that of a big deal to, right. to just do that edit. So I've, I've gone and done that. I've, I've researched that as well. And I know there's, you know, conflicting opinions about that of whether you should be paid um, for edits past the post read. Um, and a lot of people do think that you should. And, uh, so it kind of depends on where you're at, maybe as a voiceover actor, what you're comfortable with. Um, and if it's a potential for a repeat client, but you also don't want to give the impression that you're just kind of, they can just come back after months and you'll right. you know, re-edit it as well. So it is kind of a learning curve of your own, um, you know, what you're willing, what you're willing to do and what you think is fair for the price that you've been paid for your work and what they've already asked of you. That, you know what, that's a perfect answer. It's because it's one of those, and this is kind of why I asked the question because everybody does handle it differently. I think yeah. there seems to be a bit of an unwritten rule that, you know, a couple of revisions, not a big deal. You know, mm -hmm. if it starts getting a little bit, you know, a little bit much, then you, that's when you need to maybe say, hey, you know, maybe we need to start talking about a little extra compensation because there is that, that, that balance, that fine line of, you know, you want to, you know, make sure that you're leaving a satisfied impression with mm -hmm. the customer but at the same time you know you don't want to be taken advantage of no um, absolutely and you you want that repeat business and mm -hmm. we see that so often that you know a, a a client will hire you the first time because you were you were you you know you sounded great they liked your delivery but if you were great to work with then the next time they have a project that you know is requires a voice even similar to yours a lot of times they're going to come looking for you specifically. That's um, right. Yeah. There's that customer service part involved with any line of work and it's, it's no exception with doing voiceovers. So not only the voice that you're delivering, but also, you know, how you, how you handle that and, and are you willing to do those edits or are you available kind of last minute to do a certain tweaking, things like that. So you don't want to, you know, just, yeah, overextend yourself and, and they kind of walk all over you. But at the same time, you know, you do, you should feel that you want to have their finished product good and a reflection of you, um, if, especially if it's something that's going to be, you know, public. I mean, do you want to hear your voice and kind of go like, ee, when you hear that commercial or do you want to be like, that's me, that sounds pretty cool, you know? Um, so taking those little bit of extra time to do it, I think it's fair. But of course, it all depends on, on what they're asking for and what you've already done and your pay rate and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's, that's where you want to get to, obviously, is those first couple of years is doing as many auditions as you can, and hopefully to the point where, you know, in a couple of years, you know, you're starting to develop repeat business. And, you know, and you're, you're spending, you know, hopefully a bit more time, you know, answering, because most of the clients on this site are repeat clients. 
you know, so they're going to come back with another project, whether maybe they do two a year, maybe they do several a month. Um, and it's, it's the same with, you know, I think when a, a lot of people look at the, at what a particular job may pay and they say, oh, that's only 125 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, that one might be 125 bucks, but if you do a good job and blow the client away and they say, wow, you know what? We really, we really like this talent. Guess what? The next job might be a thousand. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. It's building those relationships, you know, because I have, so I've had those, you know, nine people that I've worked with. So if they are looking for, you know, uh, something and my voice is the, the same kind of idea they're looking for, chances are at least you'll maybe even be on a short list for, for something that they're looking for versus just kind of starting all over again. And they knew that they were, you know, pleasant to work with. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, question that, uh, it's, it, it's, it's funny. It's cause you mentioned this is how you got started. Um, so you'd probably be the pro on this one, Katie, I'm told all the time, your voice is so deep, not that yours was deep, but right. <laughs> you get commented on, on the voice, you know, you should do voiceovers. How would you suggest getting started? Right. Well, I mean, it, it, it does depend. Um, I mean, deep, it's like, well, our clients looking for that, for their voiceover, for their project, you know, it, it, it really all depends. Um, Sometimes you can think that you are totally right for the job and you're not. Other times you are and you didn't think you were at all. Um, so it really depends. I mean, if you're interested in doing voiceovers at all, um, yeah, with, with the voices.com, it is an interesting way to, um, to start because you can audition for a lot of things. You don't get feedback on your auditions necessarily, but you can start to see a pattern of jobs that you're hired for, even patterns of jobs that you're liked versus ones that you're not, um, ones that you think you might have, you know, fit, you know, whether, do you want to do voices? Are you a cartoon actor? Do you want to do audiobooks? Do you want to do commercials? Um, do you want to do, you know, nonprofit, um, kind of fundraising efforts? Um, there's so many different types of, of voiceovers that you can do, um, that it can really get you started into what you think maybe your, your, your niche is if you have one and where your voice might fit. So if you have a deep voice, maybe you're great for movie trailers, you know, um, who knows, but you can start off, um, auditioning for those type of things and see the kind of feedback that you get, um, and see if your voice is, um, is right for that. And it's your voice, but it's also your, um, you're acting for that too, um, they want to hear that you're believable for what you're saying. You're not just reading the words unless that's literally what they're asking for. Chances are you're selling their product or promoting their brand um, or being some sort of voice for them. And so you're not just saying things. You actually have to make that person believe it. Yep. Uh, very well said. I mean, and, and we, we tell people all the time that it's, it's great to have, you know, the, the token great voice, the deep voice, the, the big booming voice. The, the truth is, I mean, every one of us has something unique about our style, our delivery, our voice. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has a voice that someone wants. You just got to find that someone. There's so much work on this site and there's so much voiceover work worldwide that I have yet to hear a voice that isn't good for something. You know, right. And, and that's the part where you start to find out. Um, like, you know, for instance, the first job, like I said, that I mentioned, it was 60% voice match. So I was like, well, I you know, probably shouldn't bother because it's not that. But I looked at the script and I was like, you know what? I, I know what they're trying to say here. Like, it's silly as I might sound or something. I'm like, I kind of get it. And there's been numerous occasions where I, I do read the script and they hire me and they say, you've pretty much nailed it. Um, because I, I, I could see what they were trying to get at. And I think that can set you apart for someone just kind of looking at the script and then going for it. There's been some times where I'll look at the script and then I go to their website and I'm like, well, what are they about? What are they trying to, to do? And so I tailor that to, to my audition. And so it might not be my voice necessarily in terms of, you know, pitch quality, whatever. It's the fact that I've, I've emphasized certain words and I've, and I've, I've, I've shown to them what they're looking for. They've, they believe what I'm saying. I've got a, a couple of questions uh, coming up as far as dealing with, you know, the, the, the money side of things. So the first one, uh, is there an average amount that a client offers per gig? Um, but, uh, let me step in first by saying it really depends on what, what the job is because there are so many types of jobs, whether it's for broadcast, whether it's long, you know, you know high word count. I mean, it all depends on, on how long it is and what it's for. Um, so taking a look at the jobs that you've been hired for so mm -hmm. far, um, what's the lowest amount you've, you've, you've made on a job and what's the highest? Yeah. So right now the lowest I've made is a hundred dollars and the highest I've made is $700. Now what was the hundred dollar job? 
So that was just, um, it was kind of a promotional video for they were uh, launching a site. So it would be aired on further kind of event. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, at this stage of the game, I got that fairly new. Uh, and for the word count, the amount of money, I would say it would definitely have been on the lower scale of um, what it should have been. But as being like a super newbie, I was like, we'll right. just do it. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, yeah, you know, it wasn't going to be a national commercial or something like that where I felt like short change for doing it. It was just purely for the amount of work that was needed um, in, in terms of payout. But it, yeah, it wasn't like a kind of a high profile gig or anything like that. And the, the $700 job? And then the $700 job was um, just kind of a uh, like mixed media of, of promoting a new um, um, product that they're, that they're doing. Okay. So it'd be like online. Right. Now, the, the next one, again, another money question, uh, a little bit different. Uh, could we go over the cost of the service? Okay. Now, first off, you know, you... Like how long before you decided that, you know, from the time you opened your account to the thing to the point where you said, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to dole out the money to pay the membership. Um, what, how long was that? And what made you decide to, to, to take the jump? Right. So, well, for me, um, so I did sign up and I didn't uh, pay the membership yet. I just kind of started the profile and kind of looked around. But you can't do too much on that, so it kind of gives you like a little idea, but not too much. Um, but mine tailored in with um, Black Friday, so there was a deal going on. So that was for me, and I said, "Well, okay, for the amount of money that it was um, for a year, why not give it a shot?" And so my first job um, paid for that and double. Nice. So, yeah. So that worked out. So for me, yeah, there there was the sale. And then, yeah, the first gig that I got was, was 425 US. So it, yeah, it paid for right. that and, and plus made a profit. Right. Well, and, and like I say to people, it's because there's always the, the, the thought of, well, there's, there's no guarantee. Um, you know, I could put out, you know, $400 and, and not get anything uh, in return as far as any jobs. Um, obviously, we can't guarantee you get hired. We can only guarantee you we give you every bit of opportunity that we can. Um, yes. At the end of the day, it's what you do with it that's that's going to determine, you know, how successful you are. Um, one analogy I like is uh, is like trade shows. You know, vendors spend however much money to rent some space at a trade show. They're not guaranteed to sell their product. You know, they're not guaranteed to get any new customers, but they're guaranteed yeah. traffic, and that's basically what you're what you're getting. You know, with Voices.com, all kinds of traffic and all kinds of opportunity. Um, you know, you'd mentioned how many auditions you get sent to you a, on a daily basis. And these are ones that are matched to you and how you filled out your profile. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely. And I mean, you can only expect so much from, um, other people or the source that you're providing your service for. It's on you to be delivering what people are looking for. Uh, but it's a good, I mean, it's a small investment in terms of if you really want to see if this is right for you. Because if you're, if you're putting yourself out there and you're not getting any jobs, you know, maybe it's not the right avenue for you. Maybe it is, but you just, you know, you need more resources or, or, or materials to figure out how you can best um, put your voice out there. Um, so to say, yeah, that to, to pay something to have it started. Um, yeah, it, it's worthwhile because if you're going to attempt something, it, Absolutely. You, know, you have to put, you have to put something, you have to invest something yep. in order to get uh, a, a return back. Absolutely. And that's, you know, sometimes when I, I will say to people, say, if we send you thousands, if, if you do thousands of auditions in a year and you don't get hired for one job, right. Maybe voiceover. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, but de definitely. We yeah. do make sure that we offer you the resources to help, um, the guidance, any questions you have. I mean, we, we are here to make sure that you get every opportunity for success. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely something that I think, I think you would agree that, you know, it, it was worth taking the plunge. That's right. If that's where you're starting off. And I mean, if you want to try to further your advances and, you know, vocal coaching, things like that, going into lessons, whatever you want to do is, is, is there for you to do, but that's kind of on you to decide. Now, when you were putting your profile together, what did you do for a demo? And was it was it a professionally made demo? Is it something you did yourself? And, and how did you choose what to use? 
Right. Yeah. So um, I don't have any professional demos right now. Um, I, I am thinking I probably will at some point. If I was in an area that had more of, um, uh, I, I just feel what we have in the equipment and setup, we can kind of do ourselves kind of on par, well, like not quite as, but on par what I could pay for it in my area. If I were somewhere else, I would probably pay to have more professional demo sounding. Um, so right now it is just me, like I said, scripts I found online that we're able to use. Then I go on um, um, sites for, for music and download that to it and just kind of edit those, kind of balance it out that I would hopefully it has a good representation. Um, but knowing that it's may not be exactly what the, the client is, is looking for. It's just to be like, well, here's her voice. This is kind of what it sounds like set to music or, uh, right. or in this particular genre. And I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said it's, and this is why, you know, a site like voices.com has, has been such a hit with so many clients is the idea of custom auditions. You know, you're, you're not listening to a demo that has nothing to do with whatever it is the client sure. is trying to convey in, in their message and their product. You know, they're giving you the sample script. And so the demos themselves, you know, they are important, but you know, as I tell people, they're more important because they help our system know what jobs to send your way. Right, exactly. So, I mean, I am trying to put up more, more demos so we can put the tag. So if I do a demo, that's like, uh, um, uh, let's see. Uh, so I can, I can, I can call it, you know, funny, trustworthy, authentic conversationalist. I mean, you, you find that a lot more lately with jobs that are being advertised or looking for people who, you know, they say not announcery right off the bat and, you know, conversation, natural, trustworthy, real, authentic, relatable, like those come up time and time again. So if you do a demo and that's what you showcase, then you can put that in. So if they are looking for those specific keywords, you know, you can show up. So it's not that your demo necessarily is, you're going to listen to it and be like, let's hire her. It's just that it's going to help to find you. And then you can showcase what you have with their own language of a script that they've provided for you. Absolutely. And a, and a few people have asked um, in, in, in the question and answer, basically, that, you know, is, is a guest account something that I can do that with? No, um, a guest account basically gives you a spot on the site, the ability to be privately invited to audition, but essentially, you want to be upgrading your premium membership um, so that you can, you can submit those auditions with those, with those, you know, sample scripts that are provided. Um, I do apologize. We've got a lot of questions, which is great. I mean, this is, you, you've been very insightful. Um, and I, again, I apologize to anybody whose questions we don't get to, cause we, we got to wrap things up shortly. Um, what do you do for practice? For practice? Right. So honestly, not very much at this stage. Um, I do, I, I don't do any kind of like vocal warm ups or anything like that, but I do have some kind of like warm water and stuff and kind of <clears throat> clear the throat, whatever, depending. I mean, if I'm doing something that's a little bit more like gravelly or whatever kind of voice, then I'll leave it. If it's more bubbly and clear, then I'll, you know, make sure that happens. Um, but uh, really that's all I do is just try to eliminate those kind of like pops, crackles that I would have in my mouth. When you start to get dry mouth, you need some water, things like that, clear your throat, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Set up the microphone, making sure that uh, it's in the right position. If I have the microphone, Kind of off kilter, um, then my voice is is askew. So I make sure that's there. I check the um, the microphone level in terms of volume, stuff like that. Um, but no real real practice. I usually pretty much dive into it. Um, now, when you're, uh, I know we did talk about auditions earlier, but the question did come up. When uh, when you submit on an audition, do you do one recording or do you submit multiples, different takes? How do you normally do it? I typically do one. If it's really short, like a one liner, and there have been some of those, I will do a few different takes of those. Um, because I, I, I really, you know, you don't know what they're looking for. Some jobs are very specific and they'll say quite a lot of what they're looking for. They might even supply you with a YouTube video to, to hear uh, in reference of tone, pitch, et cetera. Um, very specific. Um, other times it's like literally female, that's it. And so you're like, I don't know where they're going with this. So you could, I, I'll typically do a few different variations, um, depending on that, uh, and also the length of the script. So I would say nine, no, eight times out of 10, I just do the one take the other two times I'll do a couple of variations. Now, do you, uh, do you ever spend time listening to 
I don't want to say your competitors, but I guess other voiceover talents would be somewhat considered your competitors. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I haven't really. Um, I've, I've looked into a couple for, for demos when I first started out because I wondered, I didn't just kind of want to put up anything and it sound <clears throat> not so good. Cause I thought, well, maybe they'd consider say, maybe I was in like the top three and they heard my demo and then other people's demos. And if mine was much worse, maybe I wouldn't get the job. I have no idea if it works like that, but I just thought of it. So I would go and listen to some other people's demos to see how they compared with mine. Um, but that would be, that would be about it. So, I, and the, I guess the obvious question too is without any training, without any background in voiceover or acting or whatnot, um, and you, you talked about being able to convey the message that is in the copy that you're reading. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you get to that? I don't know. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think I just did. I, um, you know, you don't want to say something silly like it's in, in, in innate or something, but kind of. Um, I, I do, like I said, the only thing I kind of do go outside is maybe I'll look at the website. So if it's for um, a company and I, I don't really know them very well, then I'll go and Google them and I'll see what are they doing and just kind of get a grasp of it. Or it really just kind of happens as I, as I do a take. So as I mentioned, like I'll start recording it as I'm literally reading the words. So it's terrible. I'm just reading the words. But as I'm reading the words, I'm like, oh, that's what they're trying to say. And in my second take, it's like I emphasize these words that, they're, that I think that they're looking for. And I could be wrong. You know, I, I am wrong sometimes, but sometimes I'm right. So it's really just reading through and then trying to picture yourself as if you wrote it. So if I wrote this copy for whatever I'm trying to sell or promote um, or, or influence or get attention to, then why did I write this? Is it funny? Is it sad? Is it serious? Um, what am I trying to do with this? Um, and so I just do that with every script. And I don't know where that necessarily comes from. Um, maybe it's just from all kinds of different stuff I've done over my life um, and interested in the arts and, and marketing and things like that, that you just kind of get a sense for those things. Um, but that's, that's what I do. Well, whatever it is, again, you're, you're absolutely, you've, you've clearly hit the nail on the head. You've been with us for less than three months. You got hired within your first week. Um, you know, you, you're basically making a thousand bucks a month as somebody with no experience, no background and no repeat business. I mean, it's, you, you're definitely an inspiration, Katie, for, uh, you know, for everybody starting out. So thank you so much for, uh, you know, for, for being here for everyone today. Um, Pleasure. It's, it's, it's been, it's, it's amazing. And I love hearing good stories like this. Uh, I do want to thank everyone for, uh, for joining us today for a day in the life of a successful voiceover artist. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it.